Gold shorts covered, silver shorts haven't. Good afternoon, everybody. It's 1 p.m. your time or thereabouts. This is being recorded at 1022. I'm Vince Lancey, and this is the Arcadia Silver Fix. Well, let's start with this. Well, first of all, we have on the left-hand side, you can see uh, what we're going to just talk about today. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see the markets. And in the middle, you can see a piece of art that we're going to discuss for a minute here. First of all, silver's path forward. World de-dollarization continues. That's a fact. Gold remonetization is in full swing and silver is now being accumulated. We'll touch on that conceptually a little bit. I want you to understand that silver will lag gold uh, as long as central banks are doing the buying. What will happen to silver if bonds rally? What will happen to silver if bonds drop? Because bonds seems to be what this market is gearing on right now. Second, we'll talk about sell season. Sell season is over, but there are some significant shorts in the silver market. We like that going into buy season. We really, really like that for a trade. Number three, the Israel-Hamas war update. Nothing too exciting about that, good or bad. But we're going to talk on that a little bit. Let's start with this piece of art here. Imagine you're a customer. Imagine you're a person who needs, who has gold or silver, but gold started this, that wants to sell. And you wait until 6 p.m. Sunday night to sell it. Now, who does that? It's hard to, I mean, I can give you scenarios of who does that. And none of them are good. In this day and age, with this kind of global continuity of markets and this kind of access to liquidity pools, for someone to sell the market, the gold market, and drive it from 1982, 1981, let's call it, down to 1963, in three minutes, if it's not manipulation, it should be, because the people doing that are ridiculous. Ah, you thought I was going to say something else. They're brain damaged and ridiculous. Look, you don't do that. There's two types of people that do that. One, people without access to liquidity, and they have to do it. Two, people who want to do it. So are there still people out there who have to do things this way? Yes. But they're few and far in between. And whoever's representing them isn't doing them a service. Uh, are there people out there that want to do this? Yes, we know that. Anyway, so that's it. That's that's for our art. It's ridiculous. It's it's what we're dealing with now. But I will I will say this. In the past, that will happen and the market will rally a little bit and then come off for the rest of the night. Yes, we're lower now. But these are being used for shorts to cover now. They're not being used to knock the market down. They're being used to get the market to sell to you. Anyway, that's my opinion. Here's a silver market. Uh, it's the daily. Take a quick look at this. Uh, I want you. I want to manage your expectations here, so you know what you're dealing with. This market could go as low as twenty two dollars and twenty cents, and I don't care. Right below that, I get a little bit nervous. And I say, okay, why is it doing that? Because inside of this range, this is the market just trying to find out what it's worth. This is people disagreeing on what it's worth by pennies. It gets below here, it starts people start disagreeing on what it's worth by dollars. So as long as we're in this range, you're fine. Keep in mind that this rally has been gold led. And that's not typical. Uh last year, last buy season, we had a silver led rally. Right, that was very nice, and you bought that. But this year we have gold leading for now, which leads me to believe that buy season has not really started yet. Although I want it to be. Um, anyway, what I'm saying here is, is silver is not its own metal right now. It's tracking gold. It's not behaving the way we want it to as its own metal. It's not a bad thing, but it's important to be aware of it. All right, gold remonetized and silver accumulated central banks are moving to remonetize gold they're doing that it's happening every time a bond gets sold someone buys an ounce of gold and that's what you hear about because that's the headlines as much as the press hates gold at least they'll talk about it 
They won't even talk about silver. That's not an accident. Silver's too important. But what do I mean by silver being accumulated? If you look at the data coming out of China, I don't have any charts handy right now, but silver is being bought and offloaded out of the Shanghai exchange at record rates, depleting the vault there. That's the silver that was offloaded out of the US. It went to China and now it's being offloaded again. What doesn't make sense is why would silver continuously be pulled out if it's such an economic metal? The behavior at the vault is non-economic, meaning we just want silver. The behavior in the marketplace, as I'm about to show you, is it's economic. And I believe, and I have information to that effect, but I don't have anything that I could uh, uh, take out in court. Uh, China's biggest buyer of silver is buying for two reasons. One, they have a big market share on the solar panel production in China. And two, they have a division that deals in money. They have a money management division, an investment division, and they're collecting physical silver for that. So while gold is being remonetized, silver is being accumulated. So we're next in line after uh, gold has a coming out party. Bonds rally versus bonds drop. I want you to think about uh, what silver's path forward will be if the bond market drops. If the bond market drops as it has been, you would think that's bearish for silver, but it has been recently not affecting it, right? The bonds have been weak and precious metals have done well. Be careful because the next time bonds weaken significantly and the stock market cracks, you might see silver crack too. Just be aware of that. That will lead to probably a Fed easing. And then it's off to the races. Bonds rally. If bonds start to rally, you're not going to see silver sell off. You shouldn't. That'll be really good. All right. Sell season is over. Let's pull that up. Gold Fix did a report the other day on Goldman making a comment about, about gold. But the, 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 the fun part of the, uh, of the story was about silver for me. Right. So this is just me quoting myself. Right. When they're right in silver, they're lucky. When they're wrong, they're toasted. What does that mean? Well, looking at the Toronto Dominion TD CTA report, it shows that the silver shorts are stubborn. And I'm going to tell you how it ends now. So here's your first, here's your first clue. Here's why you're looking at that. I'll tell you a little bit of a story. And I've said this before, but it's it's worth saying again. CTA traders, which are really aggressive retail traders with a little bit of money, think doctors and lawyers, and dentists, things like that. They will trade gold and silver frequently against each other. They will treat gold like what it is. It's a pet rock, right? And all you can use it for is storing a value. That's nothing to be laughed at, but that's what it is. Whereas silver, although we all know that it's a store of value, is also has industrial qualities because it's it's used for electricity, among other things. So what these CTA knuckleheads will do is when they think gold's going up because they're worried about a war, they'll buy gold. And they'll sell silver. And why do they sell silver? Because the exchange gives them cross-margining ability. And they look at silver as an economic metal. Now, do they always buy gold and sell silver? No. Usually, they buy gold and sell copper. But every so often, they'll sell silver. And so we're seeing a lot of that now. Now, I have to make this a little bit bigger, show you what I'm talking about. Can I do that? Oh, there we go. All right. So here we go. This is the, the green histogram. That's the positioning by large retail speculators. So in the gold on the left and silver on the right, in the red rectangle, you see that the, the, the green histogram goes down. That's the people getting short the market. And then you could see it traverse higher and then collapse to almost nothing. It's really small, but it's there. Follow that little cursor there. That's the rally that we had last Friday, right? They started to cover, they panicked. Now, Silver rally too. Let's see what happened in silver. Well, at silver, they also were way too short. And then they started to cover, and then there's a little bit, there's another peak. And then they covered again, and they actually, these people actually sold silver on Friday. So as they were buying their gold, 
they were selling their silver. It's crazy, right? You say, well, that, that that's that's a nice story, Vince, but I don't I don't see why that's true. Well, I'll show you why it's true. Because they do it in copper. See that? During the same time frame that the CTAs covered their gold shorts, they literally sold more copper all the way down to here. So they're short copper, they're short copper, they're short copper. They get even shorter copper. They buy a little back. So what we're looking at here is the least savvy traders who think they have the most macroeconomic fundamentals understood will sell copper because it's an economic metal. Fine. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Instead of selling their stocks, they'll sell copper and they'll buy gold if they think there's a war. Sometimes they'll say, well, you know, I'll sell silver instead of copper. Or sometimes it's like when they think uh, gold's going up, they'll buy silver. But right now, they're all looking at the world as economically going into a recession. And when they think recession, they think, I'll sell a little bit of gold, I'll sell a lot of copper, I'll sell some silver. And that's what they do. When they should just be selling their stocks. They don't want to do that because they don't want to pay capital gains. That's how it works. So there you have it. Silver is being treated as an economic metal, and that's why it's still, you know, considering the rally that we've had, there's still a lot of shorts out there, which brings me to the next thing. One of two things happens, always happens to the silver shorts in this setup. At this time of year, I'm 99, two-thirds percent sure. Either it goes down or it goes up. Either they're right or they're wrong. If they're right, it's because we have a recession. The Fed tightens more. The war gets worse. Who knows? Silver craps out, right? Or China implodes, which could happen as well. The second scenario is silver goes up. Well, war persists. Gold gets sticky. People start looking at silver as an alternative to gold. And the new shorts get smoked, meaning the people who are selling it for economic reasons say, well, the economy is doing bad. Why is silver going up? Because it's a precious metal, dummy. So this is what happened in Brexit, hilariously. I think that's what's going to happen. So my story is, as long as silver doesn't crack $22 and spend a couple days down there, this market is set up to rally from any time between November 1st and November 17th. That's my story. And the reason for that is, seasonally speaking, the liquidations of all the people getting out for the year are pretty much done. Gold is about to be recommended. Silver is always implicitly recommended, but they never talk about it because it's too critical of a metal. And silver is going to be bought as well. Silver will have silver still has its rocket fuel. There's your title for this whole thing. Gold shorts covered, silver shorts haven't. And when they go, it's going to go big. It's going to go big. And it'll go big between now and January 1st. And it's going to happen. So that's a CTA behavior and analysis. The reason CTAs matter so much right now is because the big institutionals are not playing, but they will be playing in about a month. Israel-Hamas war update. Well, I just want to share this little bit of geopolitic stuff there. I have some friends that I talk to about this. And uh, they believe that, well, number one, Israel, whatever the reason, needs to make Gaza essentially uninhabitable. If they can't live there and the Palestinians can't live there without having conflict, then they're going to make it a parking lot. That's basically it. And 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 you know, I'm not judging the Israelis or the or 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 the Palestinians, but I do want to say that is a trend in this world. Uh, as the world deglobalizes, you're going to find dead zones in between ideological differences. So North Korea and South Korea has a DMZ, a demilitarized zone. Ukraine is going to be a DMZ. Gaza could be a DMZ. That could be what's happening big no man's land areas uh, in between countries. The other thing I want to add that you're not going to hear anywhere else, at least not yet. Note, and I'm not an Israel expert, but I pay attention to things for oil's reasons. Note that Israel is bombing Syria, taking out Syrian airports, Aleppo and Damascus, I think. And the reason for that is, they'll say the reason for that is Hamas supplies or Hamas uses that area as a base. That's their excuse every time they do that. And I'm not saying that's not true. But the U.S. is looking for an opportunity, always looking for an opportunity to push Russia out of Syria. And if they can do that, they'll do that, whether it be 
on the tail end. It's almost like we're going to bomb Aleppo, and if they shoot back, we'll go in and invade. It's kind of like that. So this is a war on Russia as well. At least that's what the U.S. has their eye on. Anyway, silver is down 19 cents, which is not bad, recovering decently, right? Okay, so take a look at this, right? Here's silver. See that? See that long wick? That's a lovely thing. See this long wick? That's an ugly thing. This was ugly. Right? Not horribly ugly, but ugly because we had a wick down here. But this, if this market doesn't, if this market closes here or higher, I won't be surprised if we gapped up tomorrow. That's it. I'm Vince. This is the Silver Fix, and have a great day. Well, thank you to Vince for today's update, and thanks to everyone watching at home. Hope you found that one helpful in terms of getting some insight into the latest moves in the gold and silver prices and certainly a significant rally we've seen over just two and a half weeks as gold was back in the 1830s just a couple of weeks ago and has rallied quite substantially. Perhaps not surprising to see the levels on both gold and silver pull back in a bit today based on the rally we've had over the past couple of weeks, but certainly good news and was nice to see the gold price over the $2,000 mark for a brief period on Friday, again, a little bit lower today, but certainly when we think of everything that's happened this year, good to see that the metals are hanging in there. And before we wrap up, did want to thank First Majestic Silver, who brought us today's show. And First Majestic Silver announced a couple of weeks ago that they produced in the third quarter 6.3 million ounces of silver equivalent. Breakdown there was 2.5 million ounces of silver and 46,700 ounces of gold, which brings them online for company guidance as the silver equivalent production for the first three quarters totaled 20.2 million ounces, which is approximately 75% of their guidance midpoint of 26.2 to 27.8 million ounces. One of the things driving that was the metallurgical success at Santa Elena, where they achieved new quarterly recovery rates with silver at 64% and gold at 95%. And just one note to keep in mind, First Majestic is going to be announcing their third quarter earnings and dividend payment on November 2nd. So coming up in just about two weeks. And of course, we will keep you posted here. Hope your morning and week is off to a great start. And I will look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.